Now I want to show you how you can make a really fantastic design using a very simple geometric shape. And this time I've got my own little machine open, the MC10000 version 3, with the B hoop. And I want to put a Oh, and my image came from another one of those sheets from the Myers ornaments on Wikimedia. I'll let you download them and you can compare my picture with the pictures that you've got on the sheets that you've downloaded. Always assuming, of course, that you've downloaded them. Now, this is a little bit bright. So I'm going to take it into Coral. And inside of Coral, I want to go into Effects. And of course, it's not going to play nicely with me. Adjust Brightness and Contrast. Right. I don't want the contrast so high. Preview. I could still afford to be a little bit lower. I want to be able to see my nodes. Too strong. I can't see where I'm laying my nodes. I'm going to tell that OK. I'm going to go back into Digitizer. Much better. Now, the bit I want sits here. These four triangles. Or I could go for these, but I prefer these because the design works beautifully with just these. So I lay my first node after I've picked up a tool and I click 1 right into where four lines meet. And I come down to here, right into the center there. And I come up to here where the dotted lines on my graph sit, not where the lines on the illustration sit. And then I come down to that point in there, and I come down to the middle again, and I come out to this line, and that solid black line here is my horizontal center to my hoop. And then I click right into the intersection between those four squares, back onto that point again, come down to this one, and I click right where the intersection sits, up to where the intersection sits there, back to the center, and I come up to that one, and I click Enter. There is my first pattern. So now I'm going to get rid of my image. Oops, I forgot. I've got to come up here and tell my tool Stop. And I'm going to drop my magnifier. I click on my image, I hit the Delete key, and then highlight this and move it so as it sits. Actually, I might well make this a bit bigger. I think I'll go for the 11,000 again with the 2,000, the, sorry, 200 square hoop. OK. And put that one right on the intersection of that line coming down, that line going across. Now, I normally like to work at a much higher resolution, but I've got it down at this resolution, so as you can see. Now I'm going to hit Control D, and there's my second one. And I use my arrow keys, because that keeps it on the same line, and I move it over. I just move it back using the right arrow key, to nudge it into position. OK, and then I do a Control D again. There's the third one. And 
nudge it back just a touch. That's it. Control D. And there's another one. Every time I hit Control D, I make a new duplicate. And I don't offset my duplicates, even though I can in this program. Right, now this takes up one, two, three, four squares, and I've got one, two, three. Uh, I'd be pushing it a little bit to get it right to the end, but I think let's just highlight the lot and move the whole lot over till it's just barely touching. Uh, now there's a big danger now that I won't get it all in. Let's just highlight, oh, come off there, highlight this one and tell that one control D. I think I can have to settle for a fewer number. Yeah, it's knocking me out. So I'm going to move that one down. Just put him down here. Because I don't want any nasty accidents. Pull a rectangle around that. I'll move this one over again. This time I'm going to move it into two squares from the edge. That's it. And then put this one in there. And I've moved them over a bit too far. There we go. Control D. I'll move that one into position. Control D again. I move that one into position. Teeny bit more. Oops, I hit the down arrow key instead of the across arrow key. You move your tap your right arrow key to move it to the right, your left arrow key to move it to the left, your up arrow key to move it up into position, and your down arrow key to move it down in position. And it moves it one tenth every time you strike the key. OK. I've taken that one over too far, so I hit my right arrow key to move it back into position. Now I want to select all of those. I go up into Edit and tell it Group. Now that they're all group, control D. And then move that block. I have to move my screen a bit. I move that down. It might seem a bit fiddly, but and I know it's not as fast as using stipple, but as I said, I am sick to death. I'm bored of seeing stipple. Everybody uses it. OK, I'm going to drop this down to 100. Right. Now, you're not quite certain what you're looking at. Are you looking at repeats of circles? And if you've got the 12 sides of the machine, in the big hoop, And let's get the grand, hoop grand. You've got enough room to make it one full square wider. And one, two, three, four, five. Hang on. OK, one, two, three, four. A row taller in that direction. One, two, three three, four, one, two, three, four, and two rows down this way. So you could have a decent sized block. But let's go back to the 11,000 and the 200 by 200. OK, now the lazy man's digitizing function. Because I haven't
bothered doing connection lines and I also haven't bothered making certain that this is passed. Now first of all I want to ungroup it all. So I clip on one and I tell that ungroup because I can see I've got an untidy row. That one. Right, let me just blow that up. I'm a bit of a freak for getting it into position properly. I like things to fit where they should fit. Right, I've got to tell these ungroup now. Ungroup. This one is not in position, so I move him up a little bit. And this one's not properly in position. So I move him over that way just to touch, and I move him up. Because it throws the rest of them out if one of them is wrong. And this one's not in position. He's not in position because I did a complete row and pulled them down. Okay. I see all this lot are slightly off. But I'm not going to do any more editing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop it down in scale and drag a box around it right object details because I do like the back stitch line thank you it's still highlighted and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to tell it branch now I want it to start up in one direction and end down in. I think we'll have it end down here. There's the design all branched. So if you wanted to make a great big long repeat of this, you could do. The only jump is from the center to the top and it finishes down here at the bottom. You don't have to start your branching and finish your branching in one spot so if you wanted to make this a big long border you could do quite easily and if you want it to match so as it's going to match exactly put an alignment line in. Okay So let's just take a quick shufty at that. Now am I in visualizer mode? No, that's visualizer mode. Very quick look at how that will stitch after being treated by the branching function. And don't forget, I asked it to start up here and finish down here. I can actually ask it to stop anywhere I want. Actually watching a design that you've auto-branched will also teach you about pathing. What are the best routes to take so you don't get jumps, trims, all those unnecessary little tie-on and tie-off stitches because they can actually hang your machine up for you. And let's just speed this up a bit now because it's taking up time. And that's it. 
that's that one done. So I'm going to hide that, show it to you in Visualizer, blow it up a little bit, just so as you can see. Now, you tell me if you still prefer stipple to making your own fills for your borders and your quilting blocks. And I'm going to show you another one in the next video.